I'm really happy to have um, on the um, uh, on the line here some some folks who who uh, who I've learned a lot about uh, you know drone data from um, and uh, also GPS and RTK concepts. Um, and so with that, I think we'll jump right into the agenda for today. So next slide, please. Great. So uh, yeah, so I'll, I'm about to introduce our, our, our guests. Um, in addition to that, uh, we're going to talk basically today about collecting drone data, um, you know, using ground control. And so ground control is a really common method that uh, we use to bring our drone data into um, into our projects, um, you know, to, to lock those things into our real-world coordinate systems. Um, of course, there's a number of ways to do that, um, and one of the things that we're going to feature today uh, is using network RTK uh, in, in order to do that. Um, we have a technology at Skycatch that supports, um, you know, a way of, a way of doing this, um, but really I wanna, what I want to focus on here is what we call an error budget, um, which is a term I learned from, from surveyors, and what it really means is you know, you want to you, when you when you set out to collect high accuracy data of any kind, whether that's conventional survey or, or drone survey, it's really important to understand the various pieces uh, that that add to your overall error um, and kind of kind of telling those up. So, uh, let's go next slide, please. <clears throat> Great. Um, so, so speaking, my name is William Pryor. I'm the Enterprise Applications Manager at Skycash. I've been really fortunate to, uh, to work uh, for a number of years with our clients uh, building drone programs uh, both you know, in the U.S. and around the world. Um, our clients really push us to use uh, high technology uh, and uh, that's kind of what, what, what drove us here to address this RTK topic. Um, joining me will be uh, David Benowitz. So David is the program manager um, at DJI. Um, obviously, a very well-known company. I think uh, I'd be surprised if there's someone on the line who's never used the DJI. Um, so he's going to talk a little bit about the sort of platforms that are available um, for for data collection. Um, and then, in addition, um, we've got Tyler Collier. Um, Tyler's a product manager for SmartNet North America, and um, SmartNet is one of the leading RTK networks that's available. And um, uh, it, actually, SmartNet's available globally. Obviously, um, uh, Tyler's specialty is going to be North America, and uh, he's going to cover a, lo a lot of pretty interesting topics, um, which which address um, the operation of RTK networks in general, some 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 fundamental GPS topics. Um, and, and also, you know, how, how those things can be used in a lot of different applications, uh, drones being one of them. Next slide. So here I'll turn it over to, uh, to, to David. I think, David, we'd love to hear you uh, share uh, some about, uh, you know, sort of your, your, your view from the, from the DJIC. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for the introduction, William, and it's great to really be on this webinar with you, with you both. Um, so just for a quick introduction, a lot of you have probably already heard of DJI, um, but if not, we, uh, we have about a 70% market share in the UAV market with over 8,000 employees and, and growing strong. And how we do that is through a strong focus on R&D. And moving forward, we're really developing our solution offerings, um, but specifically recognizing that a drone and what we you know, manufacture as DJI is really a rapid reality capture tool. We, we produce scalable drones that can be operated um, by a construction or a uh, construction employee or even a surveyor um, to really capture quality data of their site. Uh, next slide. So what I'll move on to next is just go over two of our really basic uh, kind of tools for capturing data. The first is what I believe is the most scalable, ready to fly and easy to use platform on the market today, and that's the Phantom 4 Pro. And so what this lets you do is really quickly capture quality data of your site using both a quality camera at shooting about 20 megapixels, as well as you know, a programmable flight mode through either our app or Skycatcher's app, which will essentially automate the mapping process. Uh, additionally, if you want access to this, we do have a Sky, DJI Skycatch reality capture package. Um, so with the mechanical curl shutter, you'll be getting as minimal distortion as possible, as well as a long flight time. Uh, next slide. And then in addition to that is our more high-end model, which is the Matrice 200 series. And so that's what you're seeing on the screen now, and essentially it brings an initial rugged, uh, rugged factor and versatility over the Phantom 4 Pro. Um, so let's say uh, your job isn't just serving, but also sometimes you do drone services in general. 
So you might need it for inspection, where you need a thermal camera, um, whereas with a mapping or surveying use case, you might just need a, a visual camera. This can allow you to do both. I'm hoping I'm coming through a little bit better. Um, yeah, so with the M200, if you are using it for multiple different reasons, it is the ideal platform. Additionally, it is weather resistant. Um, so if there are strong winds or if there are light rains, you will still be able to fly and operate uh, regardless. Uh, moving on to the next slide, I'd just like to introduce briefly how you can use GPP to improve your drone maps. So previously, drones have just been really, really useful for capturing maps at scale. Uh, but now, by adding GCPs, operators can increase their accuracy or hold accuracy at previous levels as, as they would with total stations or with laser scanners, while still reaping the benefits of you know, quickly capturing data that they do with drones. And so on the bottom is a graph of you know, essentially a, a sample flight that one of our partners did a, a large surveying project. And this is a little bit exaggerated since the surveying project is quite large at about 80,000 square meters and 121 small buildings. Uh, but it does show the immediate benefits of using both a, a drone and GPP method over previous methods such as total stations and 3D laser scanning. Um, just on the first uh, bar, you're seeing field survey crew days showing just how, you know, quick, how quickly they could do this. Um, whereas previously it would take them you know, 150 days or even 600 man hour, man, out, man days. And now brings it down to 42. Additionally, you're using quite a little bit, uh, quite less equipment. So it just shows really the benefit. You can still hold an accuracy, which you know, Tyler will be getting into what exactly it means to be getting you know, this kind of accuracy, so I won't jump into that right now. But you're still capturing the data so quickly, um, which is the real benefit of using you know, DJI drones for uh, surveying. So next I'll hop it back to William, who will introduce our, our next subject. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you, David. So, you know, I think uh, ground control points are, are a really well established way of, of bringing, you know, things into, um, uh, you know, core coordinate systems uh, these days, you know, for really uh, qu quite a long time, uh, you know, probably since the beginning of 20th century, um, you know, for, for very early photogrammetry. Um, but, um, you know, obviously uh, technologies get updated. Um, and, and one of the really interesting ways that we've been seeing this happen in, um, in, in the market is, is using using network RTK. So so overall, what, what network RTK provides is a way of uh, very highly accurately uh, locating the photos that get fed into a photogrammetry software in order to uh, have a very high accuracy output. Um, and we've seen that with uh, with the right inputs, um, you know, we can have very very good uh, very good outputs without you know with, with limited or no need for for ground control. Um, but before I get into that, I think um, we'll have uh, Tyler Collier take over here. So um, Tyler is going to um, basically talk about um, you know what is what is RTK, what is network RTK, um, you know how is, how is this a really revolutionary GPS technology, um, and then you know some some of the ways that it's used and, and things that uh, that affect uh, the accuracy of, of your RTK overall. William, thank you very much uh, for um, <clears throat> uh, for uh, having us on today. David, thank you for the introduction as well. Um, uh, so uh, I think I'm going to be made the presenter here so I can flip through the slide deck. Is that correct? Yeah, we're going to hand over control to, uh, to, to Tyler. Okay, everybody should be able to see uh, my screen now. Yeah, we see you. Okay, great. All right, thanks again for having us out. Uh, so my name is Tyler Collier. I'm with SmartNet North America. Uh, we uh, are the largest uh, network service provider uh, for RTK solutions uh, in North America, uh, and we also have a presence globally uh, with our sister networks in uh, Europe and Australia as well. Uh, so today uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what are networks um, and how they can be used uh, in conjunction uh, to supplant the need for uh, heavy dense ground control uh, in, uh, in, in use of the, uh, with drones, but also give us a brief introduction about what RTK is in general. So uh, just quickly, what is SmartNet? Uh, we're a um, combination of privately owned uh, 
stations, uh, stations, uh, GPS reference stations that are owned by us, uh, and then data that we stream from other sources such as DOTs, private companies, counties, etc. Uh, we manage and monitor all this GPS data uh, coming into a central data facility, uh, and we are open to all makes and models of GNSS equipment, uh, and use RTCM as our strand uh, as our standard message format that we broadcast out. Uh, so for those that aren't really sure uh, what uh, RTK is, we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, like you heard me say earlier, we are the largest. Uh, we currently employ about 1,300 stations uh, across uh, across North America. Uh, have coverage in uh, 42 states and eight Canadian provinces, uh, and coverage uh, in 459 of the top 500 uh, U.S. Uh, MSAs. Uh, so we've got a pretty good foot size footprint. Um, uh, that you can see here. Uh, so the likelihood, if you're working in a in a metropolitan market in a in a large market, uh, we're going to be able to have footprint that's going to be able to service you uh, and help you uh, gain even more efficiencies, uh, according to what the uh, slides that Dave showed uh, just a few minutes ago. Um, so. A real-time network uh, is uh, another way of doing things uh, than doing uh, doing it with traditional RTK. Uh, traditional RTK, uh, you set up uh, a base uh, somewhere on a control point, typically. Um, uh, this is on a tripod, and you have to either have somebody standing there watching it so it doesn't scurry off, because uh, it does have three legs and they run real fast uh, when you leave them unattended. Uh, um, or nowadays, you can do uh, what's called a real-time network. And a real-time network takes the need of a traditional base uh, out of the equation uh, and lets a series series of stations uh, broadcast and give you a correction out in the field. Uh, so there's five main components uh, of a real-time network. Uh, the GNSS infrastructure out in the field, so this is the GPS reference stations uh, that are either ground-based um, uh, on, on pillars, uh, building-based on masonry buildings, uh, something that's going to give good, reliable, uh, stable infrastructure to work from. Uh, the IT infrastructure, which takes in all this data and then sends it back out uh, as a correction service, uh, then online tools and resources uh, for the user base uh, to be able to see uh, the quality of the data that they're getting, the quality of the site that they're getting the data from, etc. And then of course the support and development team behind that. So the correction service itself, uh, what we're trying to do here uh, is uh, trying to model and mitigate error. Uh, so you heard William say earlier a little bit about an error budget. Uh, every measurement technology has an error budget and trying to get that error budget uh, to be as small as possible increases your accuracies uh, as much as you can. Uh, so with traditional RTK, uh, what you have in your error budget is uh, the three main sources uh, are the ionosphere, the troposphere, uh, and the satellite orbital error. Uh, so as I start stretching my RTK baselines further from my base to my rover uh, or my drone in this case, I start incurring these errors, um, these distance dependent errors uh, in my measurements. Uh, so when we're trying to use network RTK, we're trying to uh, model and mitigate those errors uh, away from using the traditional base uh, and rover approach. Uh, the big advantages of network RTK over single base RTK, uh, either single base RTK where you're using a radio on the ground um, to do it off of a tripod, or even cellular RTK where you're connecting to a single baseline uh, to a station, uh, is you can increase your operational range. Of course, this increases efficiencies. You don't have to have the density. Uh, it increase, improves your positional accuracy at distance. Uh, so as I stretch that baseline further and further out uh, from my RTK base, um, out to my rover, I'm not going to uh, incur as much uh, hit on my error budget. I'm going to increase my initialization speed, uh, so I'm not going to have to wait as long for uh, my, uh, my rover or my drone uh, to get a solution. I'm going to be able to build improved redundancy, uh, so uh, if one station were to go down, uh, the other stations in the network work together to, uh, to maintain the accuracy that you need. Uh, and it also supports multiple rover users and applications. Our foundation is in traditional surveying uh, and engineering and construction, uh, but you're now you're seeing uh, you know, this expand into uh, just what we're talking about here, which is UAVs and, and other markets, precision farming, et cetera. So we can address all the needs uh, with a network uh, for all the different applications. So when we talk about uh, network RTK, uh, I like this picture because it really uh, illustrates the difference between network RTK and standard RTK. Uh, standard RTK, uh, you can work at a shorter distance, uh, you know, before you get into error uh, into the solution uh, with a network RTK with network correction RTK parameters, you can stretch this to longer ranges uh, and higher accuracy. Again, keeping that error budget under control. 
and I'm sorry this slide's a little bit off, uh, but RTK types, uh, we have single baseline uh, RTK, uh, so this would be uh, more traditional. Uh, so if I had a series of stations out there uh, and uh, if I was more working traditionally, I'd come out, I'd come out with a rover or a drone uh, and I would get a single baseline off this station. Uh, this station could be, again, uh, sitting on a tripod uh, using ground control um, and broadcasting over radio. I could also be broadcasting over IP, so I'm not limited to that radio distance uh, that it can broadcast at. Uh, but when you start talking about the first steps of uh, getting into a single baseline RTK uh, and, and, and trying to increase efficiencies, uh, you also have the option here um, where the uh, rover uh, goes out, uh, sends in a position to the network, uh, and then the network uh, can send a single baseline uh, back uh, from uh, from a reference station. Uh, when this happens, uh, you do have that part per million error that starts creeping in. Uh, this is a good uh, picture that kind of shows uh, the residual ionospheric error uh, for a single baseline RTK um, you know, when you go out into the field. Uh, so here in the middle, uh, you can see uh, uh, on IAAM, uh, and you have this uh, blue and green. Uh, so the blue uh, is showing you the error, the ionospheric, uh, the residual ionospheric error. Uh, so it's in the four mil range. Uh, so as I move out uh, from that station uh, out to the edge, I start accruing additional error in my measurement. Uh, so at 15 kilometers, uh, I'm going to be adding, uh, you know, you know, four and five millimeters, uh, approaching a centimeter of error there. Uh, if I get out at 35 to 40 kilometers, you know, halfway in between uh, IAM uh, and uh, IAGC up to your uh, um, uh, upper right, uh, now I'm accruing an additional uh, two to three centimeters of error. Uh, GPS inherently already has uh, two centimeters of error uh, when you're talking about RTK anyway built in. Uh, so now we're talking about a five centimeter error budget that we're having to contend with uh, out in the field. When I have the stations work together and produce a network correction, uh, now we can take uh, and we see this error budget drop dramatically uh, where we're getting now into the four and five millimeters out at 35 kilometers. Uh, so if you have the two centimeters of error that's already inherent in RTK and now we're adding uh, just five uh, millimeters uh, of additional error um, based on the ionosphere here. Uh, so we've dropped our error budget in a half uh, so we have a much better uh, well-constrained uh, uh, position uh, on the rover or on the drone. Uh, there's basically uh, four different types of network RTK concepts, uh, FKP, uh, VRS, uh, IMAX, and MAC. Uh, the three that we'll really be discussing today that are the major players in the market are VRS, IMAX, uh, and the Master Auxiliary concept. Um, each one have different issues that affect them. Uh, most of these um, uh, are, are, are uh, not as big a deal now uh, in current times, uh, but each one has their strengths uh, and each one has their weaknesses. Uh, one of the most common uh, that you'll hear uh, in, in the industry is the VRS, uh, the Virtual Reference Station Approach. Uh, so what happens here uh, is the stations uh, begin streaming all their data into a central processing facility. Uh, that facility takes that data, uh, looks at all that data, and then computes what's called uh, a common ambiguity level. Uh, the common ambiguity level is basically fixing um, all the known errors that they can model and mitigate in that area. Uh, so uh, if we have the unknowns, uh, the errors associated with the signal, uh, so one millisecond of error, uh, one millisecond of error in a time signal on GPS makes about a 300 meter difference in position. Uh, so when we compute this common ambiguity level, we know where the stations are, uh, and when we fix this common ambiguity level, we can see what the errors are associated uh, based on the known position uh, relative to the calculated position. And then this is used to do a correction. When the rover goes out, it sends its position into the network uh, with a VRS, uh, and the network creates a virtual station uh, based on uh, its position in the network. So it interpolates and says, if there were a base close to you, then this is what that base would look like. Again, we're trying to mitigate those long range errors. Um, and then the virtual reference station uh, would transmit uh, a virtual correction uh, to the rover uh, and the rover would calculate its position in the field uh, using traditional RTK approach. Um, as the rover moves uh, through the network, uh, it again sends its position uh, into the server. Uh, the server then again creates a virtual reference station uh, for the rover and then uh, gives it a virtual baseline so it, again it can calculate RTK position using a traditional approach uh, into the field. 
Uh, MAC is actually the industry standard, uh, so this was ratified by Special Committee 104, uh, so that um, all networks and operators could be interoperable uh, between them. Um, it has a very similar approach, uh, all networks do, uh, where it does send uh, data into a central processing facility. Uh, this data comes in. Uh, again, a common ambiguity level is, uh, is, is calculated. Again, trying to, get, uh, trying to find those errors uh, so that we can uh, mitigate them. Uh, the rover goes out. The rover sends the position into the, to the server. Um, and then a master correction is cr created off of the closest station. Uh, and then auxiliary uh, atmosphere correctors uh, come in uh, from all the stations around it. Uh, of course, the data streams, the IP data stream back to the uh, uh, central data facility, uh, but all these corrections are coming in uh, from all these different stations around it. This allows the rover to control the solution a little bit better. Uh, it allows traceability and trackability uh, back to the master station. Uh, and again, this is the industry standard that makes it um, a little easier for uh, network operators uh, to be transparent uh, and uh, for rover operators uh, to get all the data that they can um, out in the field uh, to, uh, to the rover. Again, this is going to fix for those uh, ionospheric, tropospheric, and satellite orbital errors, again, reducing that error budget and giving you more accurate position on the ground. Uh, the rover moves, same thing happens, position comes in, the master correction comes from uh, the closest station, um, and then the auxiliary corrections come uh, from all the other stations around it. Again, we're trying to figure out what the effects of the ionosphere, the troposphere, and satellite orbital area, area uh, error are uh, for the area uh, that your rover is working in. If I go outside the network, uh, it falls back uh, to a single baseline correction, so we don't get all those net network corrections coming in, so we still uh, have that part per million error, that distance dependent error that we have to absorb. Um, or if the network uh, were not to be fixed uh, and the network, uh, the rover was out working, uh, again, we get a single baseline correction and we'd have to absorb that additional error uh, that we can't mitigate because we don't have uh, network corrections available to us. Uh, IMAX is kind of the best of both worlds. Uh, it's a balance between uh, the single baseline um, uh, format uh, um, of a VRS uh, with the traceability and, and repeatability uh, of a MAX solution. Uh, so uh, this is uh, a little bit different where the data does go all into the central processing facility um, and when uh, the common ambiguity level is created uh, by, the, uh, by the network, uh, the rover goes out. Uh, instead of getting um, a correction from all the different stations simultaneously, uh, it gets a modeled solution uh, from the master station. So the network again looks at all the stations in the network. Uh, it looks at the effects of the ionosphere, the troposphere, and the, uh, uh, the satellite orbital layer uh, for the location that you're in, and then it tweaks and models a solution from the closest station uh, to give you a correction. Um, this allows for an optimized data transfer. Um, you don't have as much data going out to the rover, uh, so the bandwidth is a little bit more constrained and a little smaller. Uh, it also allows for rovers that aren't tuned for the master auxiliary concept uh, to still get a high quality network solution out in the field um, uh, that looks like a single baseline, but it is a network correction, uh, so you get the benefit uh, of uh, reducing that error budget. Uh, and then you also have um, uh, the ability to trace it back uh, to real stations, which you don't have uh, with a VRS because uh, you're getting a virtual station out in the field. Uh, as you move, again, uh, the NEMA position goes in. Uh, this is your position on the, uh, on the planet. Uh, and then the IMAX correction goes to the rover uh, and allows you to compute an RTK position uh, with high accuracy out into the field. So that is networks and network RTK, and handing it back over to you guys at uh, Skycatch and High Precision Packages. Awesome. Thank you, Tyler. Um, that was really, really amazing, actually. Um, uh, um, you know, I, the more I learn about GPS technology, it's really just a just mind-blowing thing. I mean, um, just so similar to traditional, you know, optical surveying concepts. Um, but uh, but at the same time, um, you know, uh, it's I'm, I'm just blown away by the sort of the, the high tech and, and high precision network that we're able to achieve. Um, so so thank you for that. And um, and we did actually get a lot of questions come in from from our users during 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 your session. So I think um, I'm just going to hop through uh, my bit, and then um, what uh, what we'll do is uh, we will um, uh, I'll probably ping a lot of those questions um, back to you for uh, for that. 
So I'll wait for the, the Skycatch team to, to bring up that, um, that uh, our next slides there. Great. So, um, so yeah, so, you know, uh, let's see, David, David covered, you know, drones, data capture with drones. Um, and uh, we had Tyler talk about, you know, RTK, RTK systems, um, you know, how we deliver high precision data uh, to, to, you know, all, all over to, to GPS uh, uh, receivers. Um, so, so after a few years of, of kind of uh, working with big clients um, around the world, Skycatch realized that uh, ground control points, you know, kind of had a little bit of a, of, of a flawed, uh, you know, an, an inherent flaw, which is they have to be managed in the field. So on big construction sites, you know, and I'm sure surveyors out there have had survey control that's run over or that's, um, you know, just been, just been misplaced. Um, you know, and, and a unique thing that you find there with photogrammetry is that if you've got a, if you've got a ground control point that gets moved, let's say, um, and you're not aware of it, um, what can happen in the processing is it's kind of like a bed sheet, right, or, or you know, a rubber sheet that gets, that gets pulled. You know, it, it's not just the, uh, the, the vicinity of the ground control point that's affected, but also a much wider area. So, um, so what we did is, is actually uh, implemented a, an, an RTK, um, uh, a network RTK system that's used uh, uh, sort of along, along with this, 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 this drone. Um, so, um, you know, through, through really testing around, around, um, uh, around the world, you can see we've gotten uh, under five centimeter accuracy, vertical accuracy, um, really on, on average for, for our data sets. I'll go into you know exactly sort of what what the breakdown is of, of, of how we achieve that, um, and our, our drone carries you know not only um, a mapping uh, a sort of a you know, gimbal camera you know the kind of really steady shots that the DJI is, is is famous for, but also a a, a high resolution mapping camera that's integrated with our uh, our RTK GPS uh, receiver. So um, so yeah, this is really a kind of a, a new generation of of, of drones, um, and Skycatch was one of the first. Uh, actually, Skycatch, I believe, was the first to uh, to to field a uh, a drone that supported network RTK collection. Um, so, next slide. Yeah, and, and what you can see here again is, is that the reduced need for ground control in the field uh, is really has an impact on the on the kind of time that it takes. Um, you know, a recent uh, we we found that it takes it's probably about a, a two x or greater time savings on you know time on site when you're when you're capturing data with an RTK uh, or, or a PPK um, system. So um, anytime you're able to absorb those high precision um, high precision photo corrections, um, you're really going to save a lot of time. Um, and and if you're doing things right and you're managing your coordinate systems and your data inputs, what we find is that uh, we can almost eliminate the need for uh, for for ground control, except maybe in uh, for, for for the use for uh, for check check data. Uh, which, which I'm sure all, all surveyors online here are, are, are know is, is, is quite a critical thing. So the next slide. Great. So, so obviously there's there's an interaction here. Back back to the concept of the error budget. Um, you know, pho photogrammetry is an inferential measurement. It's it's not it's not a direct measurement. You know, we're measuring angles and and, and triangulation. Um, and there's a lot of nuance to this. And, and especially once you bring in uh, RTK or PPK concepts. Um, it, it, the, the water gets a little more muddy. So I'm going to go into that now with the next slide. Um, like, like, like I said, again, I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to emphasize this, this, this term um, about, about the error budget. What's, what's really important to understand when you're working with drone data um, or, or really collecting any kind of, uh, you know, geospatial or, or, or in, you know, information in the field is, um, you know, we, we need to know, we need to know what our desired output is, right? So what, what's our need? Um, if you're a drone server provider, you know, you've got to talk to your clients and say, hey, um, what are you guys using this data for, right? What's, what's your expected accuracy? Um, do, we, uh, do you just want an updated background map? Well, then, yeah, you know, you can probably use a, 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 something like, um, you know, a, a, one, of the, one of the great DJI drones um, and maybe not even have to use ground control, right, if they just want to have an updated map. Um, but if we want to have, uh, you know, bulk earthwork calculation, um, that might be something where you need something like, uh, you know, a tenth of a foot um, vertical accuracy or, you know, three centimeter vertical, vertical accuracy to, to, to really make that data work. Um, also, you're going you're, you're gonna to really need to know your, your output coordinate system, right? So um, our, what we found is that in, in the United States, um, a lot of, uh, a lot of 
uh, job sites uh, and, and, and projects are, are working on uh, project grid, plant grid, a local coordinate system, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it, it's not something that's that's so straightforward. Um, and then finally, you really want to understand. Okay, so I've got I've got my drone. Um, I've got an, I've got an eager uh, you know client or or a data user. Um, and I want to know, you know, how to make them happy with with high accuracy data. That that might be that might be ground control points. It might be a local base station, um, and it might be a network RTK like like what uh, like what SmartNet provides to people. So next slide. Great. Um, so we're going to trace down this 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 error budget, right? I think uh, I'll, I'll I'll go through this pretty quickly. Um, you know, very common photogrammetric concept is that our, our Z accuracy is going to be two to three times the GSD, so ground sampling distance or the size of a pixel, um, the physical size of a pixel on the ground at, at a certain altitude. So GSD is proportional to altitude. The lower you fly, you're going to have higher resolution, you know, higher uh, or um, a smaller GSD. You go, if you uh, fly higher, you're going to have a higher GSD. The trade-off there is you're usually covering more area in a certain amount of time. Um, the next, the next input is going to be uh, the, the accuracy of our image geolocation, and this is where an RTK or PPK system comes in. Um, Skycatch can use, uh, you know, our, our, our drone um, can be used with both a, a local base, so if you've got a you know, Leica or a, or a Trimble uh, GPS sitting on your site, we can use static observations to, to correct our photo locations, or we can use something like SmartNet or, or a similar network RTK provider to get really high, uh, high precision um, uh, in image geolocation. Um, and then there are baseline effects like what, what Tyler talked about, which is if you're using a, 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 a sort of a traditional base and rover concept, you know, where the, the drone is really the rover, um, as you get further away from that, from that base, um, then things get, uh, things get less accurate. Um, finally, is going to be localization residuals, which just means, you know, what's, what's the inaccuracy in the definition of my coordinate system? It's usually, um, I think, in the terms of drone data, maybe not uh, for a total station, but it, as far as drone data goes, it's, it's generally negligible. Um, so we've got, let's say we've, we, we want to do, again, back to the mass, uh, mass earthwork, we, where we've got uh, plus or minus, you know, tenth of a foot uh, accuracy need, or about, uh, I think tenth of a foot is actually about three centimeters. Um, so, uh, you know, what are we going to do? Well, let's, let's, we're going to fly and achieve a, a GSD, a ground sampling distance of, of uh, half a centimeter, right? So then our two to three times is going to be one to one and a half centimeters. Um, what we found in, uh, in, in using, uh, you know, RTK for RTK and PPK methods for, for uh, processing drone data is that um, our, our photo position accuracy translates pretty well to our, to our output accuracy. So what that means is, um, uh, if you can think of it this way, if, if each of your photos is, is geotagged to, to a certain accuracy, um, let's say it's all the same accuracy, I'd say uh, two, two centimeters vertical accuracy for all, all my photo geotags, a typical output is going to, um, you know, once, once we process that data, if we've got a good input data set, we're going to have a similar accuracy in our, in our output. Um, so, so that's, that's generally a, a pretty linear uh, transformation, which is why using Network RTK um, is, is a great solution because you do have those, those tight tolerances. Uh, and not only that, um, you, uh, um, it's, 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 it's quite simple and you don't need to have a, a base on, you know, you don't need to have any hardware on site. So again, if you're, if you're a drone service provider, you can just show up on site and you don't need to purchase other, uh, you know, expensive survey equipment. Um, so if we add these up, we see, you know, our care careful planning, we can see we, we can achieve that sub tenth of a foot accuracy, which I think was, was one of the questions that we got. So, so for, uh, for, for, the, for the people asking, you know, how, how, do I, how do I achieve this accuracy, you know, um, maintain, uh, you know, know the effects of your GSD, make sure you have high, uh, high, high tolerance on your, on, on your photos. Again, that's something that the Skycatch system is, is really focused on, um, and then understand your, um, your, your output coordinate system. Um, so next slide, please. <clears throat> and then, um, yeah, so, so this is really, I think, an essential question, um, which is, well, how do we know we're right? A um, couple of options that you've got. One is, you know, you can use visual checkpoints, right? So um, if you are a surveyor and you've got access to survey gear, it's pretty easy to go out there and, um, you know, you can throw down an aerial target, you know, name, name pick, pick your poison, spray paint a target down, use a tile, um, measure that. And then um, you know you can you can take a few of these of these checkpoints. Um, when you do, and you're using actually a, a visual reference, 
um, it's, it's easy to tell in the output what your, what your offset is. Um, so that's both an X, Y, and Z offset. What we've seen, and this is the case for all kind of GPS-based positioning, is that um, your vertical offset is often going to be a little bit higher than your um, X and Y offset, but, um, but, but so, so often the Z is kind of your, your limiting accuracy. Um, a, a con of doing this is, is that it's time consuming. I mean, I think there is a um, you know future where these um, these photogrammetric concepts and, and GPS concepts are quite well known, um, and in, in a lot of cases, uh, it, it may not be necessary to sort of take that time to, to place these 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 ground control. Um, another another way to check actually, and this is quite an interesting one that was uh, brought to us by you know some of our users um, at, uh, at at Komatsu America, and uh, Komatsu America is is, is, is a uh, big uh, Komatsu globally is, is a big partner of Skycatch. Um, is that hey, let's just take a hand total, right? So, so let me take my uh, my rover, shoot a few points, um, and then create a surface. And then once we get the drone surface back, you know, we can see, you know, what is the uh, what's the cut and fill difference between those two uh, between those two surfaces. Um, uh, I, I think I think uh, this is this is a pretty interesting way of, of checking because it really gets down into the ultimate use of the data, which is you know uh, which is often for creating contours for for cut and fill analysis. Um, the interesting thing is it, it kind of reminds me of, of when analog TV switched over to HD, right? And and uh, you could see a lot more detail than you, than you used to see, and that that wasn't always a pretty picture. Um, well, as you can see, like you know in, in the picture here. Um, this is this is a cut fill map that's uh, that's revealing that there's a lot more data in the you know fr from the drone scan than there would be in a conventional hand topo, um, so you kind of have to be prepared to understand that uh, you know the um, the 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 average um, you know while you're shooting for for an average uh, of of a balanced site right or or balanced against the hand topo where you have an excess offset in one direction or another, um, it may actually um, you, you, you will see that, that, that some of this data is going to be uh, quite off uh, or, or it's going to disagree significantly from the hand topo in some places. Um, but really what we've seen is that that's simply because the drone data really just is, is so much more dense and, and has a lot more information in it. Um, so so just, just, just a few ways to, to, to check the data. Again, I think, uh, you know, what we've seen is that the RTK GPS um, and, and PPK, you know, using network, are very um, uh, are very effective methods of, of creating high accuracy 3D data. I think um, you know it's like 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 many other things. You really have to understand what what your data output is, and that's why checks are are very important. So next slide. We can flip through this. Great. So um, I, I, did, I touched on this, and this this is an entire uh, you know I think I think surveyors. Um, you know, spend, spend a tremendous amount of time learning about this kind of thing, which is coordinate systems. So, I would say once once you've got a once you've got a high accuracy output, you know, it's critical to know what coordinate system that, that output uh, needs to live in in order to um, in order to be effective. Whether you're working for engineers, whether you're working for surveyors, whether you're working for planners um, with with drone data. So, uh, you can join our next webinar um, in uh, in July for uh, for coordinate systems. Um, we're really appreciative that, that you're able to join us. I think we're going to publish that um, the, the the final date. Um, but look look for that in July. We'll, we'll be bringing DJ back to kind of talk about that as well as getting some one of our survey survey friends um, and specialists. So ne next slide. Yeah, some some other interested um, things that we're gonna, we're going to talk about getting started in reality capture. Um, you know, en en energy inspection. We're seeing people using more of the pretty amazing DJI uh, thermal cameras for for uh, not only just shooting raw photos, but also for for uh, reconstructing models. So this is just a list of some webinars that, that we have coming up, um, and we'd we'd like to have you. You know, if if you're experienced in one of these fields, um, we'd love to have you share with us. So uh, you can contact Tom Z uh, at Skycatch to uh, to to sign up for that. So next, I'm going to take some some uh, some some Q and A. I think we can flip to that. Um, the next slide there, and, I, and I'm just going to jump over to my um, to my Q and A uh, my Q and A questions. So really great, really great questions here. Um, we uh, we, um, uh, we we've got here. I'm going to uh, I'll start with this. We've got Farouk uh, saying, um, and this is a question for for David regarding the Phantom Four. Uh, the Phantom Four has a one inch sensor. Is this a square sensor? So question for for David there. 
Is it a square sensor? Yes, it's a, it's a one inch uh, square CMOS sensor. Okay, great. So, so thanks, thanks for, for your question. I see you have some others in there. We wanted to, um, we wanted to, uh, we wanted to, to make sure to cover that. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is. I, li I like this one from Dale. Um, question for Tyler: What's the latency, uh, the available latency for a smart net um, uh, sort of correction? Is it one hertz or is there two to five hertz um, correction available as well? Uh, uh, latency would be relative to the type of data connection that you have between us uh, and our infrastructure. Uh, typically, that's going to be you know in the few hundred milliseconds range. Uh, if you're on a um, a normal, uh, you know, you well operating cellular network. Uh, as far as data correction um, uh, frequency, uh, it's going to be one hertz uh, uh, data broadcast. Great. Uh, so, so thanks, Dale. Hope you hope we answered your question there. Um, let's see. So Tyson B, we got a, are you able to reach three centimeters, one tenth of a foot vertical accuracy with the drone and RTK? Uh, that's the accuracy our civil engineers are looking for. Otherwise, it's just a pretty picture, and we, we totally understand that. Um, you know, I've I've uh, spent a lot of time in the field and, and in the office, kind of you know getting hammered by by folks um, you know who, who are really needing some, some high accuracy data. And you know, I think for those for those who you know who, who are on the call and who are invested in you know kind of growing the drone industry, we know that we need to provide high accuracy data to, to our clients. Um, but very briefly, you know, so in, in our experience, um, yeah, it's, it's absolutely possible. You know, think about the error budget, like I mentioned before. Um, know your GSD. It's always helpful to get these high accuracy corrections. So uh, a system like that, Skycatch High Precision Package, is, is, is a great way to do that. Um, and, and another interesting thing is that um, our, our high precision package, um, you know, includes, includes this, uh, you know, high precision data processing. And uh, we do support localizations as well. So, for example, um, you can upload uh, not only um, you know, GPS correction data, but also you can upload um, custom coordinate systems to us. So, um, so, so that that would be that's a really simple way to achieve this this high accuracy that you're uh, that, that you're mentioning. Um, <clears throat> so, let's see here. Um, I got uh, I, I got another question. This one was from. Uh, where is this? So, doo -doo -doo -doo. okay. Uh, Lawrence asked a question. What are the legalities of a drone provider delivering survey grade data to customers, especially in California? Don't they have to be licensed? So, I really, really like this question. I think it's a hot button topic. Um, and um, I think what, uh, what, what, what we know is this you know, there's, there's a lot of different uses for, for drone data. Um, I think uh, you know drones. Drones are only one way of, of capturing data, and the way, the way I like to look at it is that you know drones are a tool in the surveyor's toolkit, right? And, and obviously, I think you know Lawrence, you 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 seem to be familiar with with a lot of these other tools that, that might be available. Um, so when a surveyor or, or a professional engineer you know needs needs to stamp um, a piece of uh, needs needs to stamp a um, a, um, a, a drawing. Uh, you know what, what they can do. You know, it's, it's uh, of course they're they're well equipped to understand. You know what is how how do I know? You know putting my you know years of experience behind this data. How do I know that that this is accurate? Um, so one of those things is going to be um, uh, is, is is by you know taking checkpoints. Right? Um, use another method to take checkpoints. You can use uh, other 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 drawings, municipal uh, sources to, to to get some of that that check information for you to say, hey, um, you know, I, I really believe in this uh, in this information. Um, there are going to be times when uh, you know, for example, maybe it's an earthwork company um, and they've got their machine control guy who goes out and does topos, you know, for 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 progress tracking or for billing. Um, and so for um, for those for those kind of internal uses. Um, you know that's a, that's a time when maybe some some lesser accuracy is is uh, is able to be to be tolerated because it's an internal use and it's not uh, it's not something that's that's getting stamped you know it's, it's this is like this, someone who's self performing um, you know and and who's not a PLS right <clears throat> so um, let's see so sorry I'm just going to get a couple more here um, Tyson asks. Uh, how does your data post-processing account for vegetation since photogrammetry can't penetrate to the ground surface? Yeah, great question. Um, what uh, you're, you're absolutely right. So, like, like I said before, it's, um, uh, photogrammetry is an inferential measurement. It's it's not a, it's not a direct measurement. So, what that means is if we can't see the ground, you know, we can't model the ground. 
Um, Skycache has an interesting capability for us to remove vegetation when we deliver um, when we deliver point clouds to, to end users. So, um, so when you're going from from point cloud to contour, um, or we do actually have an automated method of, of stripping out that stuff to get to the ground surface. But uh, but but we we do have to see a, a fair a fair amount of it to, to get that. So, uh, uh, some, something to something to you know really understand there is is to say um, you know how. Um, uh, what's what's the end use of my data, right? So I think if you need to know uh, topo under heavy cover, you know you're probably going to want to use a different method. Um, if uh, if 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 something more more general is required, um, then then the drone data would would, would be great. Um, let's see here. Uh, oh, and I, I I saw an interesting one here. Christian asks, uh, and I'm going to this one to Tyler. Um, Tyler, we've got about a minute here. Um, what's the difference between RTK and DGPS? Um, DGPS uh, is different, typically a differential GPS, uh, which in normal parlance would be a submeter. Uh, so it gets you into the you know, the mapping grade world, uh, but not into the centimeter level survey grade world. Uh, if you're just talking about uh, the the terminology, the technology behind it is uh, a lot different. Um, the way that the ambiguities are fixed with RTK uh, allow for the centimeter level solution, uh, where DGPS is more of a corrector um, a type uh, solution uh, that doesn't allow for uh, L2 uh, or um, the, uh, the higher accuracy frequencies to be used in the calculation. Got it. So, so overall, we're looking at, at DGPS as a slightly, uh, slightly less accurate, uh, slightly not as not as tight solution. Yes, correct. Great. Um, so, and then uh, we've we've actually got someone asking, do you have network coverage in Mexico? Uh, check back later this year. <laughs> okay. Okay. Great. So that's that sounds good, and I, I do know that SmartNet um, has has networks uh, uh, all, all around the world. So, um, uh, so you know, it's uh, it's it's um, really global service. So we've just reached our, our minute here. I know um, I really want to uh, thank everybody for, for joining. Really love the questions. Um, I, I, I always enjoy you know, kind, of, kind of sharing uh, this, this, this kind of information with folks. And I'm glad that, uh, that people are asking the kinds of questions um, that really keeps us grounded, that keeps us, uh, you know, our, 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 our drone data tied into our, 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 our coordinate systems. Um, and really pushing forward with this technology. So not only uh, Skycash High Precision, also um, you know DJI uh, using their, uh, their 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 systems as well. Um, and uh, you know I think uh, really I think if we if we if we had this uh, discussion in a year, you know we look back on this session and uh, and, and we would see you know drones with RTK and and, and network really being a, a, a quite a common thing. So I just want to thank everybody who who joined um, to help us really all understand this this better um, and big thanks to uh, my uh, co-presenters Tyler who's on vacation and uh, David where it's uh, about 2 a.m. In, in China so so thanks very much guys thank you, thank you.